Hello my scrappy friends, welcome back to my channel again today. Um, I have my next share for Cut To You. Uh, I did struggle with this one a little bit, I am very very lucky and I have like all of the Cut To You cut files and got stuck. So I asked Gwen for a suggestion and see, she suggested these burst circles. This is the fun layout I've created and I really love how it came out. So what I've done, uh, I knew that I was going to scrapbook that photo of my oldest son after his colour fun run at school, so I wanted lots of colour. I pulled out my Ellie's Studio uh, Noteworthy collection and backed all of those, uh, so all of the burst circles that are open, uh, I have used pattern paper, and the ones that have only got the centre circle open, I'm going to make shaker pockets. You can see here, I'm just using some foam adhesive. I've already attached my acetate. I used a circle punch to cut circles that are a tiny bit bigger than the um, than the circle in the middle, and I'm going back in with my foam adhesive so that I can create my shakers. It's going to jump forward in a second, so they're all done. So I pull my sequence in, and then I realised that I wasn't really sure um, which direction this should be going in. The paper that I'm using to back my circles has text on it and you're not going to see much of the text but I wanted to make sure the text was up the right way. So I'm just filling those shaker pockets and then I realise I'm like oh how am I going to get this the right way? Punch my little circle and then I'm like hang on a minute. Like, do I flip it over? No. Okay. So I managed, after a bit of mucking around, I managed to get it so that I knew which way was up and which way was down. I'm going to go in and again, I'm using my circle punches to cut circles a little bit bigger than what they need to be and sticking that onto the back of those shaker pockets. I'm sorry for my head. And I've jumped forward, I've done all of them except for the blue one because uh, a lot of my head was in the process so I figured I would cut it out and just show you this one. Making sure that all my sequins are going the right way so the cup is facing up when the cut file is stuck down. Punching my circle, using my scotch tacky glue, sticking the back on and I have one finished cut file. Almost. Um, some of these circles were a little bit too big. You could see them from the front of the cut file. So I'm just taking my scissors and trimming around there. Super easy with that foam there. And then I'm going to go around for all of the shakers. I'm going to add foam tape to all of the little burst bits. And then to the ones that I've got pattern paper behind, I'm going to put a big piece of foam behind the center and then sporadically around the burst part of each of the circles. You will see that in just a minute. I will jump forward and show you that all done because it took ages. <laughs> there we go. That's the front and the back. Uh, this is textured white cardstock that I have applied a coat of clear gesso to. You can kind of see my pencil marks there. Uh, I just went around the outside outline of the cut file in a few places and marked where each colour was going because I wanted to go colour on colour. So I'm doing yellow behind the yellow, blue behind the blue, and so on and so forth. Because this cardstock has been gessoed, you can see that my colour is moving uh, and not drying straight away, which is exactly what I wanted bringing my cut file back in and checking it, making sure I'm in the right place, adding more paint, soaking up the colour that goes in the wrong place. I have sped this up a fair bit because it is the same process over and over again. Again, I keep bringing in that cut file. Now, while I was working on this as well, I was very, very aware of um, making muddy colours. So you can see here, I bring the heat tool in for a second because I knew that the purple was going next to the yellow and I didn't want those to mix. Yes, I am using purple. Um, it was one of the uh, bolder colours in this collection and it worked really well with the photo because the photo has a fair bit of purple in it. So I did make sure that yellow was completely dry before I went in with the purple. Um, matching my green, I think. Yep. So coming in with the green and you'll see um, 
with the process I've left in, you'll see that I do go back in and soften some of the lines. Uh, so between the yellow and the green, I soften that line, make sure they kind of blend a little bit so it's not a harsh stop. And then the same with the purple and the blue. And then when I get to it, the pink and the blue as well. So I'm just moving that color around. The paper did warp um, a bit, but it doesn't bother me. I actually quite like the texture. I went to work on the pink and went, that pink and green are going to make mud, so I'll just jump over here to the blue. So I'm doing the exact same thing with the blue. Um, I leave this process in for you, but I do not leave the pink in and I don't leave the splatters in. I just used a, a smaller brush to add splatters. Uh, again, tone on tone. Um, you can see some of those water lines are really quite obvious. Um, but I am going to go back in and soften those up. Bring in that cut file back in to make sure I'm happy with the colour. You can see here I'm just softening that colour out a little bit. Um, what next? I think next is the splatters. Yes, splatters. So I'm going to stop recording now. I come on live and then I'll be back in a second. So I thought I'd jump on real quick and show you my background. Um, as I was working on this, you would have seen that I came at this one with a white. The colour was just a bit too vibrant for what I was after. Um, and you probably noticed Blondie here. Uh, used the purple instead of the blue on the splatters, but I think I'm going to be okay. I think most of this dark purple and the blue is going to be covered up, so it's not a big deal. Uh, so that is what my background all looks like, ready to rock and roll. Um, I don't know if I've showed you the photo yet. So this is the photo I'm scrapbooking. This is my oldest boy at the school um, colour run last year. Um, as you can see, he had a great time. And my cut file is here. And what I've done is gone back to the Ellie Studio collection that I used to back the cut file. Um, and I've dipped into a couple of other things to get a couple of extra labels. And I have just colour matched everything. Uh, so I've got all my blue bits, purple bits, yellow, green and pink and I'm just going to start putting my layout together. I'm going to put um, probably this tag behind my photo. Uh, maybe that's where my journaling will go I think. Uh, and then put a couple of layers behind my photo and put this page together. Hope you enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to pop all that to the side. I'm going to keep my little piles of colour um, embellishment separate. Now, for a lot of this process, I've left a lot of it in so that you can see my process. It is a lot of moving around and stuff, uh, but I have sped it up. So what I'm doing first here is making sure I've got the position correct of this cut file. I was going to leave it not stuck, and then I just went, this is going to be too hard. So I'm going to come in with my wet glue, and I start by sticking down the shaker pockets. And then I go back through and stick the rest down. I'm just using heavy things to hold that down. And then I'm going to, I pop that aside and I'm going to mount my photo. Um, I wanted a white border, so I found this pattern paper. Just put on the back of the tag this date. And trim down this paper. Straight lines makes it really easy to cut um, straight lines. And another layer, I go for the yellow here. And I think I cut it out, but I cut this completely not straight. Uh, and then I pull out my little um, trimmer and fix it up. I'm like, oh my goodness. So you just get to see me put that back together. And that's the yellow. So I'm going to pop my photo in there. You can see here I'm like, do I want the tag in? Do I want to muck around with that? No. Nah. So I changed my mind and decided not to use that tag. Using wet glue again, I've got that gesso behind there. Uh, and from here, I'm pretty sure this part is where it's all sped up. But you can see I'm literally just placing embellishments uh, where I want them, cutting things down when I want to. So this blue one I'm going to tr trim down. Um, Adding things on top, adding things underneath the cut file, uh, layering things, and just generally having fun. I did try to tuck some bits in between those bursts, and then I give up on that. I'm like, nah, too hard. I do put the blue and the purple together because they are, 
sounds really dumb because they're all really close together but because they are so close together I do pop the blue and the purple together and then kind of extend the blue down a little bit and the purple up a little bit so exactly like you see here so like I said I have left most of this process in for you I thought you might like to see it um, see me playing with all the little bits and pieces and, and some of the struggle because I'm trying to balance things and they're not sitting where I want them to sit because they're all on different layers and I haven't stuck anything down and try that little bit and I'm like yeah I don't love it try this end yeah that's okay and then I'm like how can I get this little hello in so I pull out that and pull, pop that in there I'm going to use that big heart and okay no from here it's super sped up working on the yellow section this family family something collection family fun has this yellow flower and I'm just going to trim around that and use that in my layers so I still haven't stuck all of that cut file down properly uh, and I wanted to find something to go here I found this yellow one this was just from my stash um, I think it's Ellie Studio but I'm not sure but it says so happy with you and again so you can just see I'm just playing with layers chopping things down um, tucking things under just getting it to a point where I'm happy with it I realized when I was doing the yellow that I didn't have a purple label in there so I Make sure I added that in. We can work on this minty green colour as well. Decided I didn't like the round corners on this one, so I'm just going to trim it down. Get to watch me muck around with my paper trimmer here. That goes in there. That one just says awesome. Try this different colour label. I'm like, yeah. This one was the hardest colour for me to get to work, I think, because most of the pieces here are the exact same colour. Whereas with the blue um, and the yellow, I had some different shades, or and the pink, I had some different shades of the different colours. So just trimming off the pink, the white border on the butterfly. You can see I've got the other green colour butterfly there, but I didn't want to add in two butterflies because two is a strange number. One is good. Two, when they, especially when they were right next to each other, just I felt didn't work. So I have stuck everything else down. I don't know how well you can see it, but all of the colours have got matching thread as well. The purple, I didn't have thread for. Surprise, surprise. What I did was use the same watercolours, used some white thread, and I just coloured it. Worked a treat. So I've stuck some pieces directly to my background. Then I'm going to add my thread in the coordinating colour. I'm going to, after a couple of efforts doing it the hard way, I've worked out that my scissors have got a nice pointy um, point on them. So I'm just shoving that thread underneath where I want it to go. I'm going to add in some glue on these bursts, which will get that thread to stick in place. Again, using weight to hold that down. Think I'm going to jump forward in a second and that's all going to be stuck down just making sure I've got my thread where I want it adding in this little banner with the love heart and finding out where I want my butterfly to go I'm going to stick up that little banner so some of the pieces are up on foam some are flat to the background some yeah I've done all different um, height stuff I'm going to come in with some of these puffy stickers I use two different lots um, you can see on all the other colors I've done them already I'm just finishing off with the pink my title here so the green and white alpha that says so is an Ellie studio alpha um, and then the other two are just from my stash. One is a pink fresh studio and the other is like 2014 um, fancy pants or something. 
using my black pen here to sketch around the shakers. I'm going to use the same black pen to add my journaling underneath my title and then do a doodly board all the, way, all the way around the edge. What you don't see on camera is uh, the black splatters. So I just feel like that, that black brings it all together. Um, and then I've added white stitching to the word much on the title, which again, I think just uh, ties it all together beautifully. Um, this cut file was super fun to play with. I had so, yeah, it was so a fun layout to put together. I'm really happy that uh, Gwen challenged me to use this one. So uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them below. I'll make sure I leave the link to the blog post, uh, to the shop, to this cut file in the description box below. Uh, as always, thank you ever so much for stopping by. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, school goes back in a couple of weeks, so I'm really hoping to get some sort of routine back to life so that I can start to scrapbook a bit more. Um, there's a ton of photos here. I hope you enjoy them and I will be back again very soon with another share. Um, if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, leave me comments. I love talking to you guys and I will see you again in my next video. Have a fantastic day.